By the end of this video, your fear of cold calling will be be gone. What's going on everybody? My name is Aaron Bogle and my goal is to grow into a six-figure SMA agency. I realized that people, um, maybe you're a real estate agent, maybe you're an insurance agent that's doing cold calling, you have a fear of it right now. This video is for you as well. But be sure to like this video and then subscribe to this channel as well. Uh, that way you stay up to date on the latest content about, you know, cold calling tips, tricks, and strategies. Um, how to get over the fear of cold calling, which I'm going to explain in this video. And if, you're do, and if you do SMMA, which most of my viewers and subscribers are, be sure to join my group, the SMA Client Acquisition Tips, Tricks, and Accountability. Because this is a group where we discuss and I uh, give you tips and tricks uh, that I can't always give out in video form about what's working right now that's getting SMA clients. If you've seen one of my recent videos, you, I did a live recording of from a cold all the way to close of a client of a $1,200 deal. And you know, a lots of other people have gotten value from this group as well. So feel free to join, the link's in the description. If you feel like you need more help, if you, if you want personalized, tailored one-on-one -on -one help to help you on your SMA journey, I do do one-on-one -on -one help sessions. And the best part is these are hour long sessions where I answer any questions you have. And by the end of it, you're going to have an exact step by step roadmap of what you need to do in order to whether it's getting getting your first or getting SMA clients or whether it's you got a client, but you need to get results for them and you want to know what are the best uh, ways to advertise or what are the best advertising creative or the ad copy you should be using. The one on one session will help you with that. If you want to book a session with me, link in the description below for that as well. So the very first thing I want to say is that you actually don't have a fear of cold calling. Pretty much you cold call all the time, believe it or not. I mean, think of it this way. When you're trying to buy a pizza, you're going to cold call the pizza place to uh, buy their pizza. Um, if you want to hang out with a friend, you don't mind, you know, dialing their number, calling them, being like, hey, what's up? Do you want to hang out? You don't mind, you know, cold calling people. And a cold call is pretty much a call that someone doesn't expect. And you may not know the person as well, but... You're not afraid of cold calling. You're most likely scared of rejection. That is the reason why people do not cold call. That's why, you know, 90% of, you know, digital marketers or, you know, whatever industry you're in aren't thriving because they're scared of rejection. And it's a really common fear. I mean, who wants to get rejected? Who wants to be said no to when they want something? And you know, it's tough. I mean, literally when you get rejected, a chemical goes off in your brain, releases adrenaline, and then you just don't know what to do. And you know, that's what you're truly scared of. You're not scared of cold calling. You're scared of just getting rejected when you do cold call. So overall, with that being said, you start to make excuses of like, oh, why cold calling so bad? Why cold calling is dead? And then, you know, you fall for the exploits that other people do. And they say that cold calling is dead buy my two thousand dollar system and never cold call again and then that two thousand dollars system doesn't even work and then lo and behold you have to cold call and like or cold email once more so a lot of excuses that i hear is that okay you're interrupting their day i mean marketers and ads do that all the time for the most part right like like when you're watching a youtube video you're gonna see a youtube app they're interrupting their day do you think you know um, they feel bad, like, oh, I don't want to interrupt people's day. I shouldn't show their ads. No, they still do it because that's what's making them the money. When you're on Facebook, when you're scrolling down, that's that's interruption marketing. You don't expect to see an ad. And, you know, it's not like the advertiser is going to be like, oh, no, I can't interrupt their day. They're trying to see the social media. Then they're going to make no money. So we interrupt people all the time for, like, any inquiry. So don't be scared about interrupting someone's day. And then another thing that you might think is like, oh, they're probably getting so many calls. I don't want to call them any. I don't want to be like one of those people. Well, one thing, you have nothing to lose when you make those calls. And the fact that people are so scared of rejection and, you know, so scared of cold calling, they're not, businesses aren't getting as many calls as you think that they're getting. They may get a, like one or two calls here and there. They're not getting like so many calls that like every second they're constantly picking up the phone and hanging up, picking up the phone and hanging up. Because, you know, so many people are scared of cold calling and no one's doing it. And everyone's trying to social sell a cold email. It leaves a huge opportunity, which was once saturated, to actually go out there and cold call. And another big excuse I hear 
of why you don't want to cold call is that like, oh, if someone cold called me, I would not like it. I would not want to be receptive of a cold call and you know i would be mean to them and then i would hang out well a if you're gonna be mean to that person then you need to you know check yourself because um you know they're just trying to do their job don't it's already hard enough for them to do the cold call most likely so you shouldn't make it harder on them and b i mean yes people don't really like to be cold called but imagine if a legitimate business you know they called you and they offered something that you wanted and that you needed at that time and point, you're gonna be interested. You're not gonna be so mad that they cold called you. So there's a lot of negative annotations when it comes to cold calling because people are just generally think of the negative annotations. Why not think of the positive annotations that could come? So one thing I do to like, you know, get over the fear of cold calling is just think, okay, I'm doing these businesses a favor. Like I'm literally giving these businesses free money because as an SMA, I do I do Facebook ads and reputation management as well, which all you know are proven if you if it's done right and I can do them right, um, if it's done right to get the business more money. So like the fact that I'm literally calling the business, being like, hey, do you want free? Do you want money? Do you want more money? Because I have a marketing agency and I can get you more customers. So it's like I feel like I'm doing these businesses a favor. So the fact that I'm cold calling them, you know, I don't seem so evil. I don't seem like I'm interrupting their day because I'm actually doing them a favor by actually calling them a cold call. Don't think of I'm interrupting their day for something that I want. Think of think of it as I'm interrupting their day to give them something that they are going to want. And if the business owner wants it, they're going to be happy that you cold called as well. So now I'm going to get into I, I touched about it a little bit before, but like, why do we why do we fear rejection so much? Like when we do cold calling, like why does it feel like the worst thing in the world when someone says no to us? And that's because when we someone says no to us in some way, shape or form, and we're not used to it, we release adrenaline in our bodies. And what happens is when adrenaline and cortisol, they all get released, it induces stress. And what your body goes into a fight or flight mode. When you're in this mode, your body's ready to you know either fight or most likely just flight, which with most cold calls, it's just flight for the most part. Your body can't tell the difference between getting rejected from a cold call or a saber tooth tiger is about to eat you. And also getting rejected is, you know, you probably heard if you've been doing research on this, but like it's evolutionary based as well, because you know, before all this modern citizen and boy, like before we were like billions and billions of people, we were small tribes and pretty much you had to stay in the small tribe if you were rejected for them for what that mostly meant that meant death so let's say you're in the small tribe and you know you try to do something and someone said no to you and you were rejected from the tribe the tribe doesn't want you and you're out on your own and then there's like 10 saber-toothed tigers looking at you then you know that literally meant death so our brain is hardwired to not seek out rejection not want rejection because you know in the in like you know the ancient ancient days that meant death but now it doesn't mean anything like if someone says no to me during a cold call it's not like you know i'm gonna get like hunted down for the most part right like that's not gonna happen so that's the reason why you feel that fear because your brain is thinking i'm gonna die when reality is you're just fine and if you do still think that you're gonna die i've made you know lots and lots of cold calls i've gotten People have said no to me in many different ways, and I'm still here making YouTube videos. So you can tell that you know you're not gonna die from when you do it. Okay, so now that we know you know all the basis of why you have this fear of rejection and why you have this fear of cold calling overall, and since I've pretty much just disproved any excuses that you could possibly use when you do cold calling, now you don't have any excuse. Now you don't have. Now you gotta go cold call. You know that now because you know that cold calling has closed million dollar deals. Million dollar deals have started from a cold call. But how do you get over that fear? You can't just you know watch a YouTube video and be like, oh yeah, I can get over that fear now. It does take work, it does take practice, but with time and time, um, you're gonna get a lot better from it. I still have some fear when I do cold calling. Even the people who's made thousands and thousands of cold calls, they still have fear. But you know, they take that fear, they use that energy of fear to not hold them back, but bring them forward as well. But since you're just starting out and you want to know how to get over that fear of cold calling, here are my tips and strategies that I use so that like when I make a cold call, I'm calm, relaxed, confident, 
and I'm not scared whether they say no. And you know, I hope for the yes. And you know, a lot of times they actually do say yes. Okay, so the first tip I wanna give is make sure you have a good script and not only just a script of what to say, but a script of how to handle objections as well. So for example, for my SMMA, which uh, I have a script here for when I cold call businesses as well. By the way, if you do want access to this script, be sure to join my group. Again, the link will be in the description below. I give all my group members the script and this script literally has, you know, gotten them SM gotten some of my group members SMMA clients as well. So pretty much I not only have this script, but I also have, you know, detailed um, ways to nullify objections as well. So for SMMA, these are like, these are the 10 most common objections, but the more prepared you are when you're making that cold call, the less stress you will be when you're making that cold call. Now, I'm not, now when I say more prepared, I'm not saying you need to do like an in detailed analysis of the business that you're calling. Um, if anything, all you really want to know is just the business name and the, the name of the business owner as well. You don't need to know like their history. They've been 20 years. You don't know. You, you don't need to know their like accomplishments and stuff like that. Unless you're trying to sell like a multi-million dollar deal, then you want to, you know, have as much information as possible. But if you're like me and you're trying to just sell SRMA services, just knowing the business owner's name is fine. These local businesses aren't like million dollar deal businesses as well anyway. So the first tip is to to get over your fear of cold calling slash rejection is to have a script that not only like guide you on to what to exactly say word by word to you know the person but how to handle their objections when you hear it because you're going to get the same objections over and over and over again and if you have counters to those objections then that's what then you'll be a lot more prepared and you'll be a lot more confident as well and also just to point out just because someone gives you an objection that's not a rejection okay so the second thing is if you can make the easy calls first so you don't warm you up so let's say the other day you did cold call a business and they just said oh the business owner's right not here right now but he'll be happy to take your call at 10 a.m tomorrow for the most part right so so when you're making your cold calls that day um, be sure to call that business first because you're going to be, you know, like, okay, this business already knows who I am. They're expecting my call and you're going to be, you know, a lot more relaxed, a lot more confident. And then, you know, if that call, when that call goes well, uh, you'll be, you know, you'll be in a better mood. You'll be in a happier state to, you know, keep making the other calls from businesses who don't know you as well. So if you can make the easy calls first. Number three is actually put on a nice big smile on your face before you're making the calls and actually record yourself making the calls as well. And if you can, um, try to see yourself um, smiling or something like that. So for example, when I make cold calls, I always record it uh, just for like, you know, YouTube content or I can rewatch them and actually learn from them. Or if I don't hear the information correctly, it's actually good to record it because um, then I can like replay it and then hear the information word by word and then you know So just I look at myself and I, and I smile like this because then once I smile I feel in a lot better mood. I feel in a good mood and Yeah, and so definitely put on a smile before you're gonna go cold call and try to have fun with it like again think of it this way you are helping the business out and You're doing the also you're doing the thing that 99% of other people are too scared to do and remind yourself that you're the man or you're the woman that's doing it. Like, like you're one of the people who look fear in the eye and just be like, you know what? I don't, I don't care about you. You, you take it and you eat it out of the way. You throw it out of the way. And you're still making those cold calls, no matter what your body's saying, no matter what other people are saying too, as well. And also, just I always have the mindset of, you know, even if people say no to me, if people curse me out, I'm still the same person and I have nothing to lose. So. Pretty much, I have not changed from when you say no to me. It's not like you said no to me and now I am like, all my money is gone for the most part or all my friends hate me now. And you know, people actually respect you when you get like rejected as well. Like, like for example, if you're telling your friends that you made a lot of cold calls you know, you, and they, that you got rejected and rejected, people are gonna give props to you. They're gonna be like, damn man, I couldn't do that. And you know, that's again, that's having that feeling of like you're, like you're you know, part of that 1% that's gonna actually take action. And you know, not gonna quit when someone says no to you and stuff like that. So yeah, just remind yourself that you're still the same person who you are. You've achieved the same things that you've achieved already. And 
you know, a rejection is not going to get you kicked out of the tribe. It's going to make you even, you know, more valuable because you have that experience of it as well. But of course, these are kind of like preventative measures and stuff to, you know, get over that initial hump to actually start dialing that phone and making those calls. Now we're going to get to what to do when someone actually says no to you or, you know, rejects you in a harsh manner as well. And I also want to point out that when people say no to you, a lot, most people are like really kind about it. They're just like, oh no, I'm sorry. We don't need your services right now. Thank you so much for calling though. So what happens when you do actually get rejected? So pretty much what I do to myself is I have a lot of self-talk because you know, the chemicals going off in my brain, I'm feeling that fight or flight type of, type of um, emotion that's going on. And you know, if someone says no to me harshly, harshly or you know, if they just hang up the phone, um, what I just do is just, I just do a lot of self-talk. I tell myself, I like, I know I sing my favorite song. I tell myself again, you know, nothing, you know, it's not, this is not going to kill me. I'm still here. I'm still the, I'm still the, sh still the man. Like I'm still awesome. Like, like saying this self-talk right now, is just making me feel happy right now. Even though this is going to seem kind of like, you know, arrogant, I'm saying, okay, I'm better than like a lot of other people because a, I just made that cold call. And I want to be even better than more people because I'm going to make another cold call because most people would have made that one call and then just would have been like, they would have said, no, they would have been quick cry, they quit and they, they go home and like, they, well, they don't go home. They just, they say, oh, cold calling doesn't work. And then they try to pay five grand for a social selling system that doesn't work. I'm like, no, you know what? I'm going to keep doing that because you know what? 90% of people aren't going to keep going. I'm going to be that top 10%. I'm going to be that top 1% and I'm going to keep going and I'm going to keep making those calls because I know I'm better, deserve success and I'm going to work for it. I'm like those 99% of people who are just going to complain and cry and, you know, play the victim and all that fun stuff. So after like, you know, a couple seconds of self-talk, I make more calls. So I'm like, okay, let me get that call out of the way. Let me, you know, get to my next call because if you end on that harsh rejection you're just going to keep thinking about it over and over and over again so what i do is just, i just go ahead and just dial the next number because then it's like okay i can't keep thinking about it over and over and over again because i had to make this next call and even still to this day i still get nervous every time i make a call especially my first one um so i make another call and then my brain's not thinking about that past rejection it's thinking about okay how can i make okay i need to do this next call i need to follow the script let's go so I don't think about that anymore. And pretty much, and the next thing is the more it happens to you, the less impact you, you realize that it has. Like, I remember like when I was first making cold calls and someone first said no to me, I'm like, you know what? This isn't as bad as I thought, but I think it's the worst um, when someone, as you're in your middle of your talking and they just hang up the phone on you. I think that's the worst type. And I rather someone interrupt me and just say, no, thank you. I'm not interested. than someone just hang up the phone on me. And the thing is, I've done that to people before. Um, so now I just say, no, no, thank you, because it does kind of hurt. And I think that was the hardest one, but I think now that I'm like kind of used to it, it's just like, okay, whatever, he, he, hung the, he hung up the phone, I guess he doesn't want any money, or he doesn't want, you know, services that can make him, that can make his business so much better. And then, you know, I go on and then I make the other call. And also just realize that not every business or not every person is going to need the product or service that you offer. Some businesses, for example, already have a good lead system going on, so they don't need another one and they're already getting a lot of customers. Just respect that. I mean, you can try to see if you can call later down the road and try to set an appointment so that you can, you know, work with them later down the road. Um, but if they're really not interested, there are like thousands and thousands of other businesses for SMA. So just you know, cut your losses and then just call the next number as well. And then, so let's say like even these past couple of days for me, they've been pretty bad sessions because usually I'm able to get like two or three meetings from my calls. These past sessions, I have not been able to get any meetings and you know, I've had some harsh rejections and I've had just people just hang up on me. And after a bad session, you know, even with all my self motivating and self-talk, you know, it still gets to me. I'm just plain human and I realize that. So I do things that, you know, that may take my mind off it. So for example, I meditate after a cold calling session and that really, really calms me down. I don't think about it, feel more refreshed and then I can move on with my next, next tasks of the day. And, I'll, and then also after a bad session, do something that, you know, that you find fun. Maybe you want to go out for a walk and, you know, enjoy the, the beautiful day outside. 
maybe you want to play video games so for example like if i'm feeling down i'll play some smash bros and you know relieve some stress from that and you know you know feel because i'm pretty good at the game I'm, I'm not gonna lie so you know after like beating some people up in smash bros it makes me feel good makes me feel happy again so i can go make those cold calls the next day as well and i also again listen to music music can be so powerful if you let it to be if you let it like flow in and enter your body um then music can be so powerful listen to a listen to a nice song listen to a song that gets you pumped up again and brings you back to that level that you're at before calling and remember again that you are the same person you always have been and that you haven't lost anything as well you've actually gained knowledge and you've gained you know you know a, a thicker a thicker skin a lot of people would have quit or a lot of people would have, would quit today but i'm gonna keep going and i'm gonna make those cold calls tomorrow as well but also remember the victories that you have when you do cold call so if you cold call right and you have a good script you will get meetings you will get appointments and you will get sales overall so even after a bad session i have the knowledge that okay i've cold called before and you know i'm the shit for it i've gotten meetings i've gotten lots of meetings from it and i've gotten you know sales from it as well from cold calling and i remember that all the accomplishments i've done in my life um i still have those accomplishments i still did it i'm still the shit. um so again you can think that's very arrogant but that arrogant that arrogance is not hurting anybody it's only just motivating you again don't go around to be, be like yeah i cold call and i'm better than you don't do that obviously because then because then you're just insecure um just remember that you are the sh if you do have a journal if you do journal which i do as well uh make, um i i have a list of all the um positive accomplishments in my life that i've done and these are accomplishments that you find really really positive and really goal worthy and they could be anything they could be own, your own personal accomplishments that you've met you can always go back to the gym and be like wow look at all these accomplishments that i've done i still have that and with cold calling i'm gonna add even more accomplishments to it so that is or that is how you pretty much get over the fear of cold calling as well i plan to do a video on uh strategies on when you do cold call how you can you know maximize your potential of getting a yes and I'll go into uh, this script in detail. Um, well, this opening part of this script in detail, because there's a lot of psychology tricks that are in this, you know, this short, this short paragraph that uh, actually do help and actually do lead to the yes. But don't remember. But always remember, you don't have a fear of cold calling. You just have a fear of rejection. And you know, there are many ways you can ease that fear. And then when that fear comes. You know what to do to handle it. Now that you've pretty much now that you've studied for the test, go ahead, make that phone call, dial that phone. Don't give up. Don't worry about it. People are going to tell you cold calling is dead. I can literally tell you right now it's not because I'm getting deals right now. And, you know, don't let that fear hold you back, because if you do, you'll be along with the 90 percent of other people. And if you want to be part of the top 10 percent, you got to do what 90% of people aren't doing. And one of those things is cold calling. Okay, so that is everything with the video of how to get over the fear of cold calling. If you feel confident, you feel ready to go, be sure to hit the subscribe button, like this video, leave a comment saying I'm cold calling right now. And that way I know you made it to the end of this video. And now if you, you know, want to get your hands on the script, feel free to join my group. And I also do go in detail about the script uh, in this video up there, and it's really popular. And I go, I go in through in detail why the script works and stuff like that. So I'll see you guys in that video.